It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. When the ship of your life is tossing on a sea of strife, you need someone. And when you feel so all alone And your house is not a home You need someone And when it seems life isn't fair And there's no one to share All the lonely days Somebody to care, and you want somebody to be there. You need someone, and I give you Jesus. He's the peace that passes all understanding. all around and they keep your spirit to the ground you need someone and when your body's racked in pain and your health you can't regain you need someone For all your bitterness and grief, he'll give you sweet relief. For he's that someone that you need. And I give you Jesus. He's the peace that passes all understanding. Jeremiah, the first chapter, just that one, one verse what God told him, well, maybe a couple of verses in there, and this is what 
God's word, word would do. The first chapter of Jeremiah, when God talks about how before, in the fifth verse, he said, I'm going to skip around in this. In the fifth verse, it says, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Before you came out of the womb, I sanctified you. I set you aside for myself and I ordained thee. Before you came out of the womb, I anointed you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. He put his calling on him before he even knew who he was. And Jeremiah was trying to make excuses at, at this time. He said, oh, I'm, I'm just a child. And God said, stop making excuses. If you go and you, you sp and out, you're going to do what in the seventh verse? Say not, I'm a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Jeremiah was cast in prison and everything. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. What a wonderful thing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at it. See, I this day have set thee over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out, he had a lot of responsibility, he had a lot, lot to do, to root out and to pull down, to destroy. What? No, just to go around wreaking havoc in the city? No, but to tear down ungodliness and evil. Evil government, every, everything. Just speak against it in the name of the Lord. Tear it down but, and to destroy to throw down, and not just to destroy and throw down, but also to build. Build up the lives of the people in, in, in the faith of God. To build and to plant. Plant the way of God. Plant the seed of God in them. And then, and on down in the 17th verse, he says, Thou therefore, gird up thy loins, get dressed, get ready, roll your sleeves up, Gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command you. I'm going to tell you what to speak. You just speak it. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. I'll, 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 I'll make you look stupid. I'll make you more afraid. So don't be afraid of their faces. You go and, and, preach, and preach the word. And, and it says... And in the 19th verse, the last scripture, it says, and they shall fight against you. They're, what? They're already going to resist me. They're going to rebel. They're going to fight against me, but you want me to go tell them anyway. Yes. Go do it anyway. It told uh, it, in, in Isaiah and in, in other, other parts of Jeremiah, I, I, I'm going to speak to the people through you. You go tell them but they won't hear you. In Ezekiel, he said, you go preach to them, but you're just, just going to be like playing a lovely song that people like. They, 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 they hear the words, but they're not going to do it. You don't want to be that person that's playing church. Believe me, there's more to this life than what people know. There is an eternal, do you know that everybody who's ever been born into this world is going to live forever. Forever. Somewhere. Either in holiness and God's paradise with him or in hell to be alive in a burning hell forever. But you don't hear people talking about that, you know. Mm -mm. It's just that God wants to bless us all so that well, he does, but there's more to it, more to it than that. He's got a blessing for everybody. Wait on your time, your blessing, and it is coming. 
For belief, that's the truth, and we wait patiently for the Lord. But meanwhile, we're doing, we're operating, we're living in the will of God. We're obedient to God. And with everything that God gives us, his goodness, his mercy, oh man, it comes with responsibility. We have responsibility. It's not like God's not just catering to folks, you know, like, like people think. And we're going to read a, a, just a few things in here. Show you God is not playing. He never has from, from the beginning of creation to this. God is not playing. Jesus is coming soon, and he's going to catch this world unawares. He's going to catch many people. It's the, the book, and we, we're not going through all, all those messages. He's going to catch many people who say that I, I'm saved. I love the Lord and I'm waiting on Jesus. He's going to catch them unaware and not ready. He's only coming for people who are expecting him. And if you are expecting him, you're living like it. So Jesus said, and then we're going to get, get into the message in St. Uh, St. John. He, he said this as we talk a little bit about, about the prayer. In St. John, the 14th chapter, Starting with, with the 15th verse. And he did. He, and it's so confident to, to hear that, to be able to hear it in our spirits from the Lord when, when, say, tragedy comes, challenges come, whatever in our lives. To be able to, to know the word of the Lord and, and to just, not just hear it, and to know that it's spoken from the Lord, and let not your hearts be troubled. Say, so you believe in God, believe me, believe me. You know, so you believe God, believe me, let not your heart be troubled. I've got something prepared for you that you really can't imagine. I can tell you about it, but you can't imagine what, how great and how good it is, and it's prepared not for everybody, but for you who believe. You who have received And he went on and, and established his identity as being one with God. I and my father are one. He went on, yeah. hallelujah. So he, he told them in the 15th verse, and he, this is for everybody. There's a big if there, if. He said, if you do, listen, if, if you love me, keep my commandments. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. What a blessing it is to love God. And, and, and sometimes people fall short. Who doesn't? Yes, sir. And we, we instantly have remorse. Yes, Not just feel sorry for ourselves or because uh, somebody might tell on us, you know, or somebody saw us do, or, or experienced our, our, our cruelty or saw our sin. Not, no, not, not just that. We sin against God. Yes, sir. And that's why David, the, the, the king, King David, man of God, prophet of the Lord, he, when, he, when he wrote in his Psalms, he said, against you and you only have I sinned. Yes, Lord. He knew he'd sinned against other people. Yes, Lord. I'm sure apologists were there, but he said, but you, I sinned against you. Yes, Lord. Yes. Have mercy on me. He was a man, and see, but people today don't think that they need forgiveness. People don't need to repent. People don't need to have remorse. He does. God is so good. Oh, hallelujah, he does. God is so good to me. To each and every one of us. We, we say we know his goodness. We want him to be. But who cares enough about him? To give him back what he put in us. He's given us of his goodness, of his spirit, of his faith. We live for the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not hard. It's just, it comes, I hate to use the word natural because it's, it becomes because of a spiritual birth, a spiritual motivation, everything. So it comes, I say, automatically. But he said, if you do love me, keep my commandments. And what do we find is, what do, people think the commandments are just the 10. No. Everything that God says is a commandment. 
Everything that he says to do is a commandment from the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's why in Psalms, Psalm, the book of Psalms 119, that's why just about every verse in that addresses what the word of the Lord is. Oh, yes, Some way or another. Yes, All those verses, isn't it? Man, that's, that's a lot. His commandments, his statutes, yes, his principles, his guidance. Lamp, light, it's, it's everything. Everything that God says, he doesn't request. So if you feel like it, will you forgive So No, he didn't say that. He said, if you don't forgive, I'm not forgiving you. If you walk around with malice and resentment, I'm going to hold you accountable to your sins. Every last one of them. Come on now. The Bible makes a place. And people say, well, I don't, I don't do this and I don't do that. Well, the Bible says that if you offend in one point of the law, you're guilty of breaking them all. Yeah. To keep the law means that you have to keep every point of the law, every detail of the word of God, not just one time, but all the time without breaking one. Yeah. We have no right to hold animosity against anybody. We have no right to, to be malicious or mean or hateful. We have no right. Yes, we have no right to be unforgiving. Yes, Unless, you know, nobody has any right. But if that's who you are, come on. If that's who you are, face it. Yes, Lord. Yes. If that's just who you are, then just faith will. I'm just saying I'm not a child of God. Do you know that always been imposters? In the, in the church, I mean, and, and it's because of certain spirits that are in this world. People don't like to talk about spirits, but shh, the spirits are real. But he, he, Jesus said this. I'm going to try to read through this. And he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I pray the, the Father. He was, he was preparing to his, his, for his, he knew he was going to be crucified, and he was preparing for that and his ascension back into heaven. He said, I'll pray the Father, and he'll give you another comforter, somebody to be with you that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, hallelujah, whom the world cannot receive. Church folks can't receive it. Because the spirit of truth goes against what people call, what? My truth. Come on. And Jesus already said the same chapter that he was. He said, I am the way into the glory of God. I'm, I'm the way to the Father. I am the truth. I, Jesus, am the life. Everything, I am life. Everything about me generates life. And he said, no man comes to the Father but through me. You got to come through Jesus. And that means you have to come through the way of the cross. You have to come through the way that, that Jesus has laid out. And, said, and I'll give you another coffin. Even after I'm crucified, dead and buried for three days and three nights. And after I've taught a little bit and ascend back into the, into the heavens, I'm going to send you another comforter. Somebody to go along with you, to be with you to lead and guide you in all truth. That's, that's why every word of God is pure. The, and that's why Jesus, his ministry, is still ongoing. It's still being taught. because, And he talked about it. I don't know if we have a chance to get into all that or not. But we've been there. How the Holy Ghost continues. He said, and he said whatever the, I've said, so he, he, he'll, he'll bring all things to your memory, what, what I've told you. What I talked about. And, and, and he'll teach you. See, so it's a continual thing. That's why men of God around, wherever they are, around the world, they preach God's word. They're not just hiding behind it to garner, to, to, to gather together a following of people who just love them and just, you know, to make a great name for themselves. It's not about that. No. He said, I'll get, I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knows him. But you know him, for he dwells in you. Hallelujah. He dwells with you and shall be in you. 
I will not leave you comfortless. Come on now. So you're never alone. I will not leave, and if you look that word up, and, and, and it might sound sort of cruel, sort of me, but I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you in this world orphaned. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And I'm not going to leave you like that. And he said, yet a little while, and the world sees me no more, but you see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. And at that day, you're going to know that I'm in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you, through the Holy Ghost. So he already said, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. And then he said right here again, he that has my commandments, if you have, if you have my word and you keep them, he it is that loves me. Come on now. So if you don't keep the word of God, you don't love him. Come on now. If you don't want to live and abide by the truth, by God's word, what he's given. See, we like to pretend. And this book, that's, I, I love the word of God. I, I love it. Yes, I, man, I, I, I love what, what he says, old son. I love you so much. I, I love to hear that. To comfort my, my soul, to, to touch me in the depths of my spirit, to yes, just fill me with, yes, with the bliss and joy of heaven. I love it. Yes, but I also love when the Lord corrects me. Yes, I do. Yes, it doesn't feel good. Yes, it makes me ashamed sometimes. Yes, sir. Still, even in, 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 in the times of correction or chastisement, I can lift my hands and praise the Lord. Thank you. So much for loving me, for caring about me, not allowing me just to go back and just live in the trenches of sin and hatred. Never, I, I, I thank God, thank God for His voice. Praise the Lord. So it says, He that has my commandments and does what keeps them. He it is that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will do what? Manifest myself to him. The people who love God, the people who love Jesus and obey him, see, and that's what Jesus said, and I talked to somebody about this the other day. The, the people who will obey the word of God, he told them that you're my friends. If what? If you do, in the same time, about the 15th chapter, I believe, if you do whatever I command you, if you obey me, you're my friend, I, I will let you, I will let you into the mysteries of the Lord. I'll open myself up to you. I'll become more real to you. I'll, get, I'll draw you closer. We say we, but everything comes with sacrifice. You have to lose a little bit of yourself. You do. We have to lose selfishness. Jesus spoke of that. You know, he talked about it. You know, talked about you want to be exalted. You, you, well, you humble yourself before God. You want to win, you, you will, will lose yourself. You have to lose your own life in this world and, and gain and live the life that God has given you, the life that God has placed in you. So, and then he, he, he said this, and Judas asked him, and it says, not Judas Iscariot. He said, how will you manifest yourself unto us and not to the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, here he goes again. And so many times in this one chapter, he will keep my words if you do. So if you don't and you don't want to and you don't like it and it, if, if God's word irritates you, you know, there's no way you can love God. Amen. Amen. You can't say I'm in love with the Lord. When, if the word was, I don't want to be mad. Man, you have issues far beyond what you think, and, and that's, that's the problem with most people. Most people, when they look in the mirror, they don't even see themselves. They can see everybody else's faults. They can see everybody else's hair is nappy or needs combing or needs fixing or whatever, you know. They, they, they see that everybody else's life is tarnished, but not mine. 
There's nothing wrong with me but C4. A believer, it's so true. I love that scripture. And I forget which book of Corinthians is, is in. For a believer, when you get into the word of God, you do pass from glory to glory. God, he, God, he does, and, and you see it because it's seeing you, and it's working on you. It's building you. Hallelujah. Growing and, and blessing that new creation in Christ Jesus in you. But he says, if, if, and this is how I do it. He said, if, if a man love me and keep my words, my father will love him and will come to him, and we will make our abode with him. He that loves me not now, Keeps not my sayings. My word is not important. Obedience is, is not a priority. See, but we, but we can masquerade obedience, but in our hearts to rebel, see, everything about God starts from the heart. And then he said, and the words that you hear are not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the comforter, here it is, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And he does. He does. Praise God. God speaks to your heart. He does. And when you hear his voice, you know it. You want to be close to God. You, love, you truly love God. You're in love with Jesus. You're in love with God. God, he, you'll get there. He'll, he'll draw you closer. That, that's that's his whole, God's whole thing from even in the Old Testament church. He just wanted to draw them nearer to him. That's all. So all I asked you to do was hear my voice. You know, hearken to me. That's all, that's all I asked. Hallelujah. But a lot of people didn't come out following, following the Lord. But we, we find that with so many different spirits in the world, and, and, uh, and, 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 and yes, Jesus spoke on hell. He talked about it because people are going there. And he talked about how he's, he's going to tell some people, departed into hellfire and brimstone, that was prepared for whom? The devil and his imps. Prepared for Satan and the fallen angels. Yeah. But people are going because of our ancestors, Brought sin on us, brought sin on everybody, but God has given us a way out, given us redemption, given us forgiveness, praise God, given us a chance for, for a relationship with him. Only through the Lord Jesus Christ, not just religion, not just through morally, but through a relationship with God, through the receiving of the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And when he comes in as Lord, he doesn't just come in and, and sort of remodel your, your life or remodel the way you think. He brings in a whole new creature in there. He, puts, he, he, re, he rebirths you, makes you a whole you're new person. So we're going to quickly and briefly get into some, some scriptures because uh, I know uh, ooh, we've heard this for years and years and years. We are living in perilous times. That's, that's, that's the truth. Perilous times, troublesome times. And, and the Bible speaks of it, but first I'm going to go to the book of Jude first. Let's, let's, let's get Jude. And it says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. Hallelujah. This was, you know, Jesus' brother by, by uh, his, his natural father that God gave to live with, Joseph and Mary. And it says, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in whom? In Jesus Christ, you can't be preserved, eternally preserved without being in the Lord Jesus Christ and called mercy unto you. Praise God. And peace and love be multiplied, saints of God. Oh, yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. It's all the blessings of God for God's people. And he said, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write to you of the common salvation, 
It was needed for me to write and exhort you, to encourage you, that you should earnestly do what? Contend. What does that mean? To fight for it. To demand it. Contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. So what does that tell you? That people have gotten away from the original faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. The truth of God's word. They mixed it in with some of everything and everybody. And it says, for, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before, before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into what? Lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. They, they, they rejected they use the word of God, but they reject the truth of God's word. And, and again, the Bible does say that some people, they, they, they do, they, they know the truth. They know, they have the knowledge of the truth, but they reject it. It's being a part of preachers and everybody. It's being a part of, of what they should teach in their churches. People aren't taught to fear God. People are not taught to obey God. They're not taught to love one another. They're not taught to live a holy life for God. That God loves you no matter who you are, and he does. No matter what your sins are, God, and, and he does. And then he says, come to me, and I'll wash you, make you, make you clean, white as snow. Yes. I'll forgive you of all your sins. Yes. And that's why Paul wrote in, in, in the book of Corinthians, and, and he, said, he talked about all the different sins, mankind, hatred, adultery, fornication, uh, uh, effeminate, doubt, just everything. He talked about all hatred and, and drunkenness, all that stuff. And he said, and such were some of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, I've, but God, by the grace of God, I've called you, said God, out of that. Yes, yes, They're preaching a message today that says that God saves you in your sins, in a sense. And he does not. He saves us from our sins. Sin has no more dominion over us. He washes us clean. We have the victory through, the, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Sin does not control us. Hallelujah. They've turned the grace of God into the civics. Do what you want to do hate each other, live immoral lives, and you're still going to heaven. Don't worry about it. God's got you. That's not true. It's gotten to the point where people don't address families. Supposedly godly, God-fearing families don't speak to, to the, even their children about God and, and the way God expects people to live. How to, you want to have true happiness Take, believe this book. Yes, yes, Obey it. Amen. Live by it. Yes, Let the principles of your life be established by the word of God and see what joy and happiness will automatically come to you. Praise God. People are chasing that, this thing today, the, chasing the dollar. Chasing the world, and the Bible teaches us, don't be conformed to this world. This, this world is crazy. People have gone mad, killing each other. Anger, and, and the filth is just, man, it's just crazy. It's gone crazy, and God is, Jesus is coming. And preachers, and, and, and that's why they, they don't preach it, because they want folks to love them. They want folks to follow them, and they, uh, we, we don't want to offend anybody. We, man, if some of us hadn't been offended, we wouldn't have gotten saved. This word, it, it will. It'll step, it'll step on you. It'll let you know you're not all that. No. God is God. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, forevermore. God hates sin. 
He always had. See, God is not in love with it. He turned his back on his son because he became what? The Bible says he, he gave Jesus to die for us, to pay our sin debt, and he said that he that knew no sin became sin for us, and because he, he, he became just a mass of sin, took on yes. the sins of the whole yes. world, yes. God turned his back. Yes, sir. And when Jesus cried out, why have you forsaken me? And the Psalms, I believe somewhere in Psalm 22 somewhere, somebody find to make sure. He said, but I understand why you had to turn your back. Because you're holy. You don't have fellowship with sin. You, you don't look on sin with approval. No way. God sees the sins, but he does not look on sin with any kind of approval. He looks on it with hatred yes, sir. and disgust and contempt. So don't let people fool you. And the thing that now God just loving everybody and we all going to heaven, let's raise hell, let's kill each other, got young folks. Kill. What's wrong with these young people? Stuff on television like uh, drug dealing and gang, gang banging, like it's some kind of honor in that. No, it's not. Like it's a glamorous, no, no it's not. No, it's not as evil. It's a waste of life. It's, man, it's a waste of breath that God has given people. And to throw, to throw life away. And so many just, man, they'll, they'll wish a billion times over in eternity. I wish that I turned to God. I wish that I received Jesus as my Savior. First chapter of Titus, and so much in, in Titus. And we, talks about Paul is writing this letter to him, letting him know the reason that he left him there, to, to, to deal with the church, to appoint elders in every city, to ordain bishops and ministers who were chosen of God, to minister. And he's, he's, he's saying that, talking about how a bishop, sort of in the eighth verse, well, seventh verse, a bishop, which is a pastor, a preacher, a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self, self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker like a, a brawler or a fighter, not given to filthy lucre, not greedy for money, especially money gotten in any kind of evil way, but he should be a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate holding fast the faithful word as he's been taught and, and not to veer off from that, from the word of God as he's been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine to both exhort and to convince the gangsters, people who are against the truth. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they. So now if they, if they had a lot back in those days, don't you think there are a lot of unruly vain talkers and deceivers in the day we live in. We're going to take a look at it. Whose mouths, and he said their mouths their mouth must be stopped. Can you keep people from talking? No. But how do you, how, how do, how do you stop their mouth? With the truth. You teach the truth. And don't back away from it. Whose mouths must be stopped. And he said this, who subvert, they will subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, why, for money, for money. Listen, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own said, the Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies, lazy, gluttonous people. He said, this witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables, but he said, don't give in to the Jewish fables. Listen, and it tells us in another place, don't, don't live because by old wives' tales, okay? But he says, he says this, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, if a person is defiled in their spirit, in their mind, he said, nothing is pure, but even their mind and their conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God. Which, and, and what do we see today? Do you know if everybody...
who says they know God live like it, this world would be a different place. This city would be a different place. This state, this country would be a whole different place if everybody, what they call, the, what they call, it, they got a political Christianity now, you know, the, the, especially some, some of the right-wing groups or whatever they call it, you know, they, but, but they still allow hatred, prejudice, all kinds of stuff, you know. No, division. They profess that they know God, but in works, the way they live, what? They deny him. Being what? Abominable. What does that mean? Hateful, disgusting to God. They are being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. What does that mean? That's a reject. A reject. They're alienated from the truth of God. They, they're rejected. They reject truth. They, they think they're just rejecting truth. They're rejected of truth by God. They're, they're rejected. And he goes on to tell them and say, you, you, you speak those things that become sound doctrine. You teach the word no matter what. And, and that's why he, he told Timothy, and we might read a little bit of Timothy, which we are, maybe not that part, to preach the word. People don't hear th things like this preached in churches. Hell? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm telling you, preach the word. And it says this. I'm, I'm just going to read you a few in the second chapter. Speak the things which become sound doctrine in, here in uh, Titus. That the aged men, the aged men, the older men, be sober. Yes, Don't try to run around. Yes, you 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old trying to act like a little diddy bopper player. Yes, no, you're not. That the aged men be sober, serious-minded, sober-minded, grave, temperate, sound in the faith. Listen, in charity and in patience. And that the aged women, the older women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh what? Holiness. Not false accusers, not slanderers, not gossips. Listen, false, uh, whoa. That's not the way a believer lives. That, that's a lot of stuff in this Bible. And to even allude to something like, do you know that's sin? That is wrong. That's wrong. Listen, listen to this. So the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, always run off at the mouth, not, not, not given to much wine, and teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober. Now, now let, let, let's address that. What young women? Saints of God, the young women in the church, young women, especially those who are just starting out in life. But you don't try to grab an older woman who's got children, got a family of her own, and, and unless you are close enough, established with her through relationship by the Lord Jesus Christ in the Lord, and you really care enough about her to say, sister, you really, maybe you ought to take a look at the way you, you, you're treating your husband or doing your children. You know, you... Yeah, but you, especially people who are starting off in life, try to help the young women. Start teaching them when they're young. If you, if you haven't started teaching your own, young, your young sons and your young women, your young sisters in the church, don't try to go out and teach everybody else's. Come on now. You had not talk to your own about Jesus, let folks alone. Stay, don't start getting in people's business. Say, look, wait a minute, you, 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 need, to, you need to stop you wearing your dress. And, and sisters, don't... You're wearing your, no matter what the world is doing. You watch how you dress. Be careful how you carry yourself. And the average person that dresses a certain way, and then if somebody hits on them, you know, I'm not saying that, and it's not an invitation, it's wrong. It's, it's not advertising like people say it, but in a, in a sense it is. Don't get mad if you dress, that's, that's what Timothy was all about. Uh, when, when Paul, was Timothy the Corinthians, when he talked about uh, women running around with broided hair. What's wrong with braiding hair? It wasn't just that. But in that day and era, that was, they had a lot of problems with prostitution in the church. A lot of it. And a lot, and a lot of people, they, a lot of people would, would uh, actually be worshiping other gods and raising money for idols and, and 
uh, I hate to say the ministries of other gods, but they would prostitute themselves. Prostitutes would, would hang around the, the temples of God, you know, and they would dress, they would, they would present themselves a certain way to make themselves more sexual. You don't want to dress just for sexuality. You're, you're, fem, you're, you're a woman. You're going to be beautiful anyway, you know? You don't have to, you don't have to, uh, to sell yourself. Or put yourself on, 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 you don't have to do that, but look nice. Nothing wrong with looking good, nothing wrong with looking nice. Look nice, take care of yourself, but don't market yourself. Okay? What's valuable to you is what's inside of you. It's what's who you are. That, that's what's valuable, that's what's precious. Your intelligence, your beauty, your wisdom. Nothing wrong with being beautiful, that's, 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 that's wonderful. But don't try to use yourself. It, it, in that matter, to attract. You're going to dress, say, that's like fishing for, now I'm not a good fisherman, so don't, don't, <laughs> don't let me tell you wrong. Fishing for, for, for bass, but you, you keep pulling in, uh, what they call, crappie, crappie or whatever it is. You know, you, you want bass, and you're getting mad every time you pull, so when you start grabbing the crappie, don't get mad because the bass ain't hitting, okay? <laughs> okay? <laughs> Because that's what you get. You start pulling in the catfish, and that, that's what you get. So you're getting a lot of catfish. Don't get mad because the bass are not hitting. And say, what's wrong with me? Okay, maybe you, you shouldn't be, just fish. Live a good life. Do what you're supposed to do. Love God. Live the way you're supposed to. And it'll happen. Things will happen in, in due time. But all this is, all this is, is part of the word. But you're not going to hear this. You know, you're not going to hear anything like it or, or preach about hell or salvation. Oh, man, and it says on, on down here, I'm going to have to cut this, this part short. In the 11th verse, it says, The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, not, not that all men have it, and it teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we're waiting on. He gave himself for us to redeem us to himself. So we're going we're to we're get this in Timothy. I'm going to hit Timothy right quick. First Timothy, the fourth chapter. I have to make sure everybody's got it. This is the book of First Timothy, the fourth chapter. Fourth verse. Now, is this coming out of uh, somebody's uh, book on how to, how to have a healthy life? You can have all that. Is it coming from how, how to have a, a successful life, how to, how to win friends and influence? Isn't this? No, this is coming out of the word of God. Yes, sir. This is God's word. It's not authored by any human being. It's authored by the Holy Ghost, authored by God himself. And it's still, and men of God around the world, they're still preaching the word of God. They're still being taught. They're moving, being moved by the Holy Ghost. They're, they're not, it's not of their own private interpretation, God forbid, but it's preached and taught by the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. Through the Holy Spirit of God, as the Bible says, the angels, man, they, they, they want to look into that. They, they, they're just awestruck by it. That God would save men, save sinners. And gift them in such a way and give them as gifts to the church to preach his word and to watch for the church. So the Bible says, so what's going on today? We're going to take a quick look at this and then we're going to move on to, to 2 Timothy right quick. The first chapter, the fourth chapter, 1 Timothy, first verse, brother. Yes, now the Spirit speaketh expressively. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Some, so the Bible tells us, to contend for the faith. They saw it coming. They, they knew that, that everybody wasn't going to be sincere about Jesus. They, they, they knew that people were going to be living in hypocrisy. People are still going to be living, the, like in, in the Old Testament, talk about how people say they, they, they worship their own gods and do what they want to do, but, they, they, but they, they worship the God of heaven too. You know what I mean? People think they can straddle the fence. Live for themselves, do what they want to do, say what they want to say, 
offend one another. The, the, you know, the Bible says, it, God forbids his people to go up and down the, the, the life, highways, and the villages and towns as a talebearer. Gossips, backbiters. And I, man, you know, God forbid, that's all this Bible. So he says the Spirit speaks expressly. What does that mean? Very plainly. So this just wasn't something that was coming out of Paul's own heart. It was in his heart. God put it there. But the Spirit of God was really putting this on him real heavy. The Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. And we see that even in the times that we, people are le they're leaving the true faith of God. Come whosoever will doesn't mean what the Bible intended to mean Amen. in some of these churches. Come on now. Amen. Doesn't mean what, what God meant when he said come. That means come who, whoever you are. Yes, sir. In life, whatever your sins may be, who, whatever you've been, come to me. Let's reason together. Hallelujah. Though your sins be as scarlet, see, don't come to me and, and expect me to receive you and let you stay like you are. Amen. He came to give life yes, yes, and to change the life that you live. Yes, you, People are still, they're leaving the faith and they're preaching in churches today that it's all right. They're calling good evil and calling evil good, but it's all right. Come on. God forbid. Amen. And they will leave, they'll depart from the faith doing what? What causes them to leave? Giving heed to the seducing spirits Come on. and doctrines of the devil. Persons, you know, that's what a, per, a, a spirit is. It's a person, a personality. It's a person, not like a human being. It's a person without a body. It's a living entity without flesh, without a body. Yes, Jesus talked about spirits, unclean spirits. He, he, he cast spirits and demons out of people. He, I mean, it's all through, but you don't hear, you're not, not going to hear about that today. But people are giving heat to seducing spirits. What, do, what, what is a seducing spirit? Now, we used to say that. But if it's going to, to take you by force means to rape you. <laughs> that's, what, that's what that is. So it doesn't mean take you back to, huh? Entice. Yeah, we used to say that. We used to believe it. To, 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 but it entices you. It entices the individual. It lures them away from God. Lures them away from the, the righteousness of God. Lures them away from the sanctity of, and the holiness of God's word. Lures them away. Well, God didn't mean it like that. That's, that's the same trick that Satan used in the garden on Eve. Did God say this in there? No, he didn't mean it. He, he, the only reason he said that because he knows if you eat that fruit, you're going to be like God yourself. You're going to become. See, it, to, to deceive. You don't have to obey God like that. You're human. You, you, got, you got feelings. What do you think about? Yeah, and, and that's what people live by, what they think and what they feel. Seducing spirits. And, and, what, and you're going to find a lot of seducing spirits in the religious world, in the church world. Not just say it like that. And I've got something for you. You don't want to live that life for the Lord. I've got something that, that's acceptable. And God says it's all right. The lie. It's all right. Come, whosoever will. You don't have to change. You can still be hateful. God understands. Come on now. That was something we used to say all the time. Wasn't it? God knows my heart. Yeah, he knew it. <laughs> he knew our hearts weren't right. He knew our hearts were dirty, filthy. Because there's no effort to change, no nothing. No repentance, no, no turning away, no remorse, no nothing. Feeling comfortable in sin is ungodly. Amen. Feeling comfortable with a hateful heart is ungodly. Amen. Come on now. Amen. And people, well, God understands. He does, and that's why he, he beckons us. 
Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor. You're laboring with life. You're heavy, laden with the burdens of life. He said, I'll give you rest. Get hooked up with me. I'll fix it for you. And he will. Seducing spirits. This world has been enticed. The church where a lot of churches have been enticed away from God. Some folks that used to halfway preach the truth, enticed away from God and the truth of his word. Mm -mm. No. And what seducing spirits and teachings in the church, doctrines, that's what a teaching is, right? Doctrines of what? Of whom? Devils. Devils. Whoa. And Corinthians tells us, well, I don't know if we get it, and I don't want to, I don't want to do a lot. But I, I got to read that one, just one little piece. You hold your finger right there. In, in the book of, what's that, 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Let's see. Just that one little piece here. Let's see what, what we have. Third, third verse, and I'm going to skip around. Paul is saying, I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so that your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Just obey God. Love God. Obey his doctrine, his teaching. For if he that comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, that's what people are getting. You're getting, you're getting some, people are getting filled with all kinds of spirits in some, some of these churches. If you receive another spirit, which you've not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, you might bear well with him. So don't, you don't, he's, he's not saying, don't misread this. He's not saying to take it. Even though you've tolerated him, you got to take heed and understand what we're saying. Know that Satan's got preachers in the pulpit. He said, he, he said that. And then he goes on to say down here in, in the 13th verse, he, he says, for such are false apostles. So they're, they're true men of God. They're some real men of God. But they're false apostles, deceitful workers, people transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. No man can make himself a true apostle of God, meaning they're, take, they're, they're imposters, they're frauds. They take on the role, the, the, the job, the, the so-called position of a minister, but God has not called them, okay? Such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, don't be surprised at it, because Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, listen, Satan's ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works and going to hell. That's, and, and, and all who hear, hear them are following right along. If the blind lead the blind, what's going to happen? Jesus said it. They're both falling to the ditch, into a ditch. So the world is, is going to hell in a handbasket. And preachers are leading them. This word, it, uh, it goes against the grain of human nature. And all you can do is, oh, wait, God, thank you for letting me know. Have mercy on me. Help me. Listen. And, and here it goes. They speak. They the, Take heed to, doc, to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, mm -hmm. having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Brainwashed. They believe that the lies they're being taught is the truth. No scripture to back it. But they take it. They believe it's all right to hate. It's all right to fornicate. It's all right to commit adultery. It's, it, it's all right to, to raise hell with each other. It, it's all, they, they try, man, they're trying to change what God made. To change men to women and women to men. Man, with that, it's all right to interfere in the natural course of things the way God laid it out. God forbid. Come on now. Forbidding to marry. And the, uh oh. So, any religion that forbids marriage is ungodly? Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on now. And commanding to abstain from meat. Yep. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Listen, for, of them that believe and know the truth. Yes, sir. 
So if you don't eat pork, don't say, I don't eat pork because my religion. No, no, it's not because of what you, your religion. Say, I like that pig, but it does not like my blood pressure. <laughs> it hurts me, you know. So, so for health reasons, or because it's fatty and I want to lose weight, what, whatever it is. But, but don't make what you eat or don't eat part of something God said. He said, no, it's, 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 uh, anything that you want to eat, if it's quick. Now, not poison. Now, don't, please don't misunderstand this. If something's that's going to make you sick or your body can't take certain things, don't eat it. That's, that's your decision, but don't blame it on God. And why is it all right to, it says in, in the fourth verse, For every creature of God is good, mm -hmm. and nothing is to be revealed. Come on now. If it be received with thanksgiving. Pray over it. Thank God for it. Fifth verse, and that'll do it. For it is sanctified uh -huh. by the word of God and prayer. It's cleansed and set apart for consumption by the word of God and prayer. So in, in 2 Timothy, and I'm trying to get through these. In Jesus' name. The third chapter. Hallelujah. We gotta, we gotta, gotta get on it. Hallelujah. It's really sad. Some people don't realize it, but the spirit of, 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 of witchcraft is yes, hovering in some of these so-called churches. Yes, sir. Yeah. Man, that's ministers appointed by Satan to mislead, to misdirect people to teach people contrary to the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the doctrine of godliness. And you, you think all these words like that, what we're reading from Paul, do you, you think that's, uh, that's just what Paul thought about it? Uh, no, no. Some things he, he said, now, being a minister of God and, and dealing with God and having received certain revelations from God, he, he'll own up to it. Say, now, th this is my thoughts on it, you know, when he gives advice in certain, certain cases. But what was really happening through the writing of all these letters from the different men of God, from Jude and, and others, Luke, who uh, uh, penned not just the Gospel of, of St. Luke, but the Book of Acts and, uh, and others. Who, what was that? The Holy Ghost was still teaching. It, right. the, teaching what? The doctrine of God, the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what's, what's going on here. And that's why it's so important. See, people think, well, all I got to do is obey the words that's written in red writing. Don't be a fool. Come on now. I just, don't be crazy. If it's not in red writing, then it's, oh, man, I don't, I don't really believe it. Don't be crazy, please. No, 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 no. This is, this is the book. This is it. This is the word of God. And God tells us something. That we, and we are most definitely living in the last yes, days. Yes, I, I, I want the I want, believers, you got to be ready because be, believers do exactly that. They believe. Yes, sir. Believers expect. Yes, sir. They believe in such a way it affects the way they live. Yes, sir. They don't have to be forced into it. Preach to them. Yes, and they will. You know, and, and as they read too, preach to them, they will pass from glory to glory. It's going to happen. The motives of their hearts are right with God. God, he's preparing. He's preparing his church. I believe that. Around the globe, God is getting his people ready. Jesus is coming. He's coming, folks. He's coming for those who are looking for him. He's coming for the saints of God. And he tells us that in the Word of God, in, in the book of 2 Timothy, third chapter. Yes, sir. This know also mm -hmm. that in the last days perilous times shall come. Perilous times. Yes, sir. We're living in perilous times now. And, and, and it's, we, we think that, uh, well, and it does say in here that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But, but these perilous times, things are getting bad because of the attitude and, and nature, the conduct, the, the thinking of human beings. Yes, We're making it worse. Yes, 
perilous times. What does per perilous mean? So troublesome times. The Bible speaks, Jesus talked about it's going to be just like it was in the days of Noah. Talked about how, how rampant the, the communities as they were back then. Filled with violence. Say the whole world was filled with violence. The imagination of, of the thoughts of man's heart was evil, continuing. That's all they thought about. What they can get into, what they can take, who they can take from, how they can do what, who they hate, whatever. The only evil continually. Yes, sir. We're living in that same time right now. Yes, sir. Jesus is coming. In the last days which we're living in, perilous times shall come. And the reason why, these things that we're going to read. Yes, sir. Perilous times. Why? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Now, now and just think about this. Let this word read us. Read, read you. Read me. Selfish, self-centered. We care, man, we, we have no regard. And look, you think these folks that out here stealing, robbing, pillaging, killing one another? Man, I've never seen the life where you hear so much about people killing their children and, and vice versa. Lovers of their own selves. This is sad. They don't care about anybody. People don't love one another. Don't have, a, like, the, we're going to read natural affection. Yes, sir. Go covetous, ahead. boasters. Co covetous, that means to be greedy. Yes, sir. To be braggarts. Yes, sir. You can't watch television. People turn in their mess. <laughs> you can have a news feed on your, on your phone and, and try to catch the news, and you got some ignorant looking people trying to flash money. And it's, it's just jumping around. Yes, sir. Smoking dope, crazy. Brag, and bragging on sin. Covetous, bra and yeah, braggarts, yes, bolsters. Proud. Proud, oh man, that's a big one right there. They're proud. Pride is, is nothing but demonic. Go ahead. Blasphemers. Blasphemers. Hmm? Disobedient to parents. Oh, that's important. Disobedient, man, you, that's a sign of the end time. Come on, don't let that be you, young folks. Yes, sir. Unthankful. Unth oh, man, unthankful. Yes, sir. No grant to live without gratitude. To live, to, to think that they are entitled. Yes, sir. Well, you're supposed to do this for me because you're my, my mother, my father. No, no, I'm supposed to do nothing. Are you got it? You can, well, that's right. I have it. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I don't have to do anything. No. People to show no appreciation, no gratitude for anything. People wake up in the mornings and just about curse God, don't only realize that God gave them life to see another day, you know? Unthankful and what? Unholy. Unholy. So God's got some holy people. Yes. He's got some people he set aside for himself. Go ahead. Without natural affection. Without natural affection. Praise God. And, and, and we used to use, and we still do, use the, to describe it that, that people don't have the natural affection of a dog. Yes, sir. Which is true. You can feed a dog and take care of a dog, and that dog will love you. That dog would probably try to protect you, take care of you. But a dog, but humans help a human. More is never enough. They'll slander you, whatever. You, you can help them different times in life, and and and, and still they, they got complaint about what you don't do. Come on, of what you what they feel like you ought to do, you know. Don't have natural affection. Yes, sir. Now, and look at what we're living in. Definitely not natural affection in the days we're living in. No, sir. God never intended for men to be in love with men like that. No, no women to be in love with women. God never did that. Amen. Totally without natural affection. Yes, sir. Amen. Never. 
And it's scriptural. Re re read the word, brother. Truce breakers. Truce breakers? Yes, sir. Man, you, you better... It's good to, have, to make agreements, to have covenants with people, but there are some people who are just natural covenant breakers. They're, they're going to expect you to hold up your end. Come on. Yes, sir. See, they, and, and that's true. You do what, what you say you're supposed to do for me, but I don't need to hold up my end of the bargain. Amen. That's a truce breaker. Yes, sir. That's somebody you cannot trust. And once people show you that, don't. Amen. Come on. Yes, don't trust them. Yes, sir. Truth breakers. Go ahead. False accusers. Liars. False accusers. They're going to find fault with any and everything you do. Go, go ahead. This, this, now, now, this all this sounds bad. And some of us, come on, I, I'll speak for myself. I can't say that I've been innocent from all this. Yes, sir. Come on. I, I can't, for, from everything. I, I can't say that. Amen. This is everybody. Yes, sir. And this is not just talking to men. People, yes, not just talking like a fallen saint. Somebody was asking me about that the other day. A, a fallen saint is somebody who wants to get up. A fallen saint, somebody, like the Bible says, if, if, if a brother be overtaken in a fault, ye who are spiritual do what? You restore that person. See, you can't restore somebody who refuses to change. Yes, sir. Come on now. Yes, sir. If they fail because they were a thief and they don't want to stop thieving, you can't help them up. Amen. They want your pity because maybe they've been caught or punished for it or whatever, but they do not want to change the way they think. Amen. Yes, sir. You can't restore, restore them back to what? To still being a thief? No, it's not talking about that. And, and, in, and this right here, the saints who fall, they don't want to live this lifestyle. Amen. They want to get out of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They want to be better, Lord. Yes, yes, yes you do. Yes, you deserve better yes, sir. from me. Yes, sir. Listen. Incontinent. Incont without any kind of self-control whatsoever. Fierce. Fierce. What? Fierce. Yes, what does that sir. mean? Hmm? Brutal, yes, sir. mean, hateful. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Despisers of those that are good. And hate people <laughs> that are trying to do the right thing. <laughs> they, they want to live the best they can for the Lord. Yes, they, they figure something wrong with you. Yes, sir. There's something wrong with them. Yes, sir. Because they expect me to do the right thing. Despisers of those that are good. Yes, Listen. Sir. Traitors. Traitors and never, never trust. If this is somebody's life, you never trust a traitor. Somebody that you know is a traitor. Never. Come on now. Yes, no, no, no. Amen. I will never trust a traitor. Now, if they have been a traitor, I've got to see them get born again. Come on. <laughs> I just now got to see the blood of the Holy Ghost come down on me every time. Because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to trust them. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I should make an apology, for, but that's, that's how I am. You show me that you're a dog or a snake, that's who you are. Yes, sir. You do that and you, you, you want to remain, you want to stay like that, okay, fine. That's who you are. Yes, sir. You can't repent, you have no remorse. No, you're still a snake. You're still a traitor. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. Traitors. Go ahead. Heady. Heady. High-minded. Yes, oh, high-minded. Got all kind of lofty dreams. And the, they, uh, 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 I hate to say almost a, like being a narcissist, opinion of themselves. Yes, high-minded. Go ahead. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Listen, lovers of pleasures. Pleasures get their attention quicker than God. If the pleasure takes them out of the will of God, is this, Father, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going over here. Come on. Yes, sir. Lovers of pleasure. God's, God's pulling, pleasure's pulling. I'm going this way. Yes, sir. Come on now. Yes, sir. Lovers of pleasure is more than lovers of God. Go ahead. 
having a form of godliness. So this is talking about where are these people at? In the, In the church. church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Talking about church people. People who's singing and, and, and preaching and, and, and talking about the Lord and, and feeling good because they went to church that Sunday. Yes, sir. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Yes, sir. This is the word of God. Yes, sir. I must preach it. Go ahead. Having a form of godliness. Listen. But denying the power thereof. They don't believe that God intends for them to change. They don't believe that God has given them authority yes, in their own lives to change just with repentance and a decision. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what you got to believe. Yes, sir. You have to know it yes, and receive the blessing from the, that's the truth, the blessing from the Lord. That's the only thing, yes, sir. if you've fallen, that will get you up. You have to be pulled up by the hand of God, but you have to want to get up. See, if you don't want to get up, no, there's no hope for you. And they deny, they, they say, well, I can't help it. This is who I am. Okay. They deny the power of God. From and such turn away. Say, don't think those people are genuinely saved. Amen. They're in the church, but don't, but if, they, if this is the lifestyle, they can't repent. They can't change. This, this is just the way they live, and they're comfortable with it. Come on now. A believer is never comfortable with sin. That's what I know. No matter what they look like, they are never. They're wanting help from God. Yes, sir. From such turn away. Yes, sir. Go read it. Read it. For of this sort are they which creep into houses. Creep, so that means they're hiding. Yes, sir. They're creeping into houses late at night. They park the car around the corner. They don't want to be seen. Yes, sir. Or they have somebody else give you park your car around the corner or in the garage or whatever. You know, you know it's, they're hiding. It's illicit. Yes, man. But they live under the pretense yes, when they do get caught, well, I'm just praying for sister so-and-so. Are we, we just having fellowship. Fellowship doesn't involve sex. Yes, sir. Come on now. It, that fellowship does not lead to sex. Amen. Come on. Yes, sir. Fellowship is not the, pre the premise just so we can have fellowship, just to, is to open the door to get in to your life for sex. That's not the reason. Yes, sir. No. Amen. Ooh, Lord Jesus, have mercy. Give me a fan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Amen. That's not, that's, it's not the reason for it. Yes, sir. And they lead captive silly women laden yes, with sir. sins, led away with diverse lust. Yes, and that's all it's about. Yes, sir. It's nothing about God. Amen. Young ladies, you want to, and, and do marry. Please don't just start having a lot of babies and ain't, can't even spell husband. Please. Yes, sir. Stop. Stop. I'm telling you now. Please. Amen. And when you get a, when you have a husband, a husband, you know what a husband does? He provides. He loves. He covers you with everything he has. He, he offers you not just himself, but leadership of God. In a godly, that's what a husband does. Yes, sir. Some of these folks, they look, they look for women to take care of them. You know what I mean? And a woman to help you, she will. But if you get stuck, somebody who would, uh, uh there's no change, no growth, no nothing. Yes, sir. No potential, nothing. Sometimes that can be potential, but if you don't want to change, you won't. If you don't want it, you feel like everybody owes you something. You, that, you don't, man, please. That's God, and that's why I guess the Bible tells us plain, that when a man finds a wife, now a wife, a real wife, he finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Because women are such a blessing to God. It's, so I, was, I, I heard somebody talking about that. Uh, we talk about it all the time. But it was, what, the last couple of weeks ago. And it's true. And men, respect your wives. Yes, Show them honor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And women, stay away from men who want to exercise 
the authority of God's word over your life when, I mean, over your life, like the Bible says a, a, a woman ought to treat her husband. And they, they haven't even mentioned the word wife. You better get away. You better watch it. Yes, sir. At some point in, in the relationship and conversation, and I don't mean somebody showing you, you know, say, look at this ring I got for. Say, when you bad? About 40 years ago. <laughs> you know, uh-uh, no, I mean somebody who's, who, who has good intentions. And men know. I'm, I'm going to let you in on a secret. Men know from day one. Just about, just about early on in the relationship, they know if they are really wanting something to happen to lead to marriage. They, they do. And, and some, now please don't misunderstand me because some men do. They, they want it to lead to, like, to Jesus come relationship with someone. You know? but, but there are some men who are low down too. They're low down and they already know. No, they ain't got no thought, no, no plan, no desire to go in front of nobody's altar to, to make somebody their wife. And if you're dealing with something like that and you know it, what's that say about you? Come on now. Amen. And you know it. That's not even, he's, don't consider me. Y'all got real quiet. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. That's what, yes, that's, that's what the whole, the church is considered to be and called the bride. Yes, sir. Yes, the bride. If God can give us all kinds of promises and, and all and draw us near to him. But man, he goes farther than that. The bride of Jesus. And that's, that's the way a relationship is supposed to work out, you know? Yes, it's supposed to, to work out into a maritable marriage. A ceremony. Well, if it's when I say ceremony, I don't mean some doesn't have to be some big to do. Mm -mm. But those vows, that commitment, that love, the exchange of, of, of the ideas and thoughts of, of what's already existing in your heart. You don't wait until later on to, to love her enough to give your life for you, but when you, you love her now that much. Amen. That's what you want. Yes, sir. Come on now. Yes, sir. Don't sell yourselves cheap, ladies. God loves you and you're, you're valuable. Women are an asset. They, man, smarter than we are, more intelligent, more capable of showing affection and emotion than we ever, everything. Men have emotions. We show emotions, but they're more capable. They have, they have say, men are more uh, logical thinking in, in some cases, line by line, line by line. But women have a bit of that, but they also have a certain intuition that we don't. Well, they can look into that. They, 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 they have that. And that's why it takes a man. That's, and that's why, as smart as, man, what, how smart did that woman have to be to get Adam to disobey God? Yes, sir. Used it the wrong way, but to help, she was there. She could be a help to that man. But the thing, in order for a woman, a, a man, oh no, and I had some, heard somebody talk about this, and it's true. How can a woman help you if you have nothing to be helped with? You, you have no leadership. You have no plans, no goals for your life, no nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can't sit down and talk to her, and that, that's, that's all part, y'all, we're getting on something else now. <laughs> that's, all, that's all part of the relationship. You know where you're going in life, and your primary goal is naturally, you, God first. He's the head of all things. Head of your life, head of your marriage, head of your home, all of it. But you, you have these ambitions, these desires, things that you want to, and you're not greedy for the money, for the dollar, but you, for the well-being of God, for the well-being of this, this lady that you have, that you want, you want to be your wife. Your plans include her. You have some, and that's why the Bible says you dwell with them according to knowledge. In order to dwell with a woman according to knowledge, you've got to have the wisdom and knowledge of God yourself. Yes, sir. God has placed us, and that's why, why did God make us? He had to make us, set us as the, the heads over the home. That's, that's the thing that women go through all the time. Do you know it's written in the Bible? 
That's part of the curse that, that God put on the woman. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. What was that? Your desire to be this man, yes, and he'll rule over you. God had to put it like that because she was capable enough by herself. Don't get me to preaching and talking about it because I would, if you ask me, I will tell you the truth. Yes, sir. She's capable. And look around in a small community like the church. How many women do you see making it in, in a good way by the grace of God yes, with God's help on their own? Yes, sir. Capable of taking care of themselves. And on the other hand, how many men do you see who are able to match that? Lord have mercy. So when a man finds a wife, he's got a good thing. A woman who's interested, she loves him. Man, she honors him, she respects him. She accepts his headship from the Lord. And, that, and that's where she looks. This is, this is my, my husband, you know. This is the man that God gave me. And, and she loves him. Makes life better. Praise God. Marriage is a good thing. That's what that, God told him. It's not good for men to be alone. He talked about it. It's, it's not. So when you have somebody who's going to be with you, united with you, in love and holy matrimony, don't play on that. Don't play with that. That should be holy. Come on now. Let's, let's close out, bro. Let's get ready to close out. They, they won't get you after church. You know <laughs> I'm going to get in my car and go the other way. <laughs> They're going to get you. <laughs> uh, let's, let's let this go. Then I have to read two more, and we're going we're to let it go. Back? Oh, I can't say that. Go, go ahead. But I've got to give this to you today. Seven verse. Ever learning mm -hmm. and never able to come to the knowledge of and, the truth. And some people do. That's why it's not good. Don't wear yourself out trying to learn, do study. You're in school. You're in college. You're, you, you, you got work to do. You got studies. Please, please do all you can to accomplish what you're supposed to be achieving in, in your days of learning and, and study. And, and once you finish school, once you achieve whatever you want to do, make sure that you continue, saints, to learn. Whenever you, and we say it all the time, it's so true. You stop learning, you're dead. Yes, sir. You're at a stalemate. You, st you don't grow, you know. To, to grow is, is to learn. But don't just try to read all kinds of books about everything because you open yourself up to so many things that you don't want. Amen. Some people try to read a lot of stuff about uh, spiritualism in a sense. Please be careful. Know what you're doing. Yes, sir. Stick with the word of God. Yes, sir. That's Stick with God's word. Yes, sir. And don't try to bring something in to replace what God said. Yes, sir. Don't do that. You're opening yourself up for a demon. Okay, I, I said it. Uh, okay. Ever learning and, and what? Never mm -hmm. able to come to the knowledge of that, the that's truth. That's the truth. Read it. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, yes. so do these also resist the truth. They do. Men of corrupt minds mm -hmm. reprobate concerning the and, faith. And that's what happens. Ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge. They can't accept the truth. They're always learning. They always got a different idea, a different opinion, a different feeling, if you want to use that word. But I think, mm -mm, and never really able to get the truth. They can't accept the truth from God yes, about whatever God said, about themselves, about life, about anything. Mo these two men right here, Janice and, Jam and Jambres, yes, they were magicians. They dealt with the occult. So whatever you do, you stay, I'm going to read something about the occult. You stay away from the occult. Yes, sir. In any shape, form, or fashion. Stay away. I used to love, and some of you know, I used to, I used to love uh, like horror movies. Oh, no. No, I don't. Vampires, all this, all this stuff. Didn't matter. But they got so much stuff out about wizards and witches. Yes, and sir. Just yes, every, I, no. That is not entertainment. Yes, sir. That's something to desensitize you yes, sir. to what's really going on. That's the truth. Yes, so you're just being too religious. Well, maybe so. If you want to call it that, so be it. 
but it, it, it desensitizes you to what's really going on in our atmosphere, in our world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's why, Paul, I'm going to read this. I, I, I got it, brother. These were magicians, and people have brought the, the, the occult into the church. Yes, oh, come on. We, we're going to close out in a minute, so I'll read the rest of these. Then I'm just, I want to just read through them, get through them. In the book of Galatians, he said this. First, I read this, Galatians, first chapter. And then he, asked, he had to ask him a question, what happened to you? But in Galatians, the first chapter, sixth verse, he said here, I'm just going to read a couple of these. He said, I marvel, talking to this church, people that he uh, preached the gospel to. He said, I'm surprised that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the gospel, into the grace of Christ, into another gospel. You believe another? That is not really another gospel, which is not another, he says, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. When people try to make changes to the gospel, they try to make it uh, mean something that it does not, or make the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, or make the word of God, e e ex even accepting stuff that God said, it said at one time, I hate. Do you think if God said centuries ago, I hate pride, that now he's, he's embracing it? No, he's not. No, he still hates. Listen, so he says this. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, other, it says, other than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you, other than what I, other than you've received, let him be accursed. And over, and over in the third chapter, I believe, I'm just going to read one verse. First verse, he asked him this. Oh, foolish Galatians. He called them foolish. Who has bewitched you? Who's put a spell on you? Listen, who's charmed you? We didn't get to it in Timothy, but the Bible speaks about how, how the evil men and seducers shall wax worse. The charmers. People who operate under the spirit of the occult. Who has bewitched you? that you should not obey the truth. So when a person convinces you to not obey the truth of God's word, they've cast a spell on you. Yes, Come on now. Yes, sir. You have received a spell. You've received it. You've opened yourself and welcomed it. When somebody convinces you to not obey God, to no, you don't have to. Man, that's witchcraft. That's demonic. God knows, God knows we're human. This whole time. Go right ahead. Come on. We, we just talk about it. You see, and you, you've ever didn't have seen the truth and, and, and Jesus was crucified among you. You say, you, you, you already know. But we have to go to the book of Deuteronomy. Right quick. Deuteronomy. The 18th chapter, 9th verse. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. These things are extremely hateful to me. Don't involve yourself with them. There shall not be found among you anyone that makes his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, to offer your, your son or daughter as a, a sacrifice to, they had a God called Molech or Moloch, some people called him, to burn through the fire. Or, or you should not use divination. What is that fortune telling? Listen. Or that uses divination or an observer of times. What is that? In a, astrology. Horoscopes. Stay away from all this stuff are an enchanter, which you have some in the church. Come on now. And what people call the church, who cast spells, who charms. And the spells that they cast. And do you know what witchcraft is all about? 
gaining control. That's it. Somebody who uses what? An observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. Well, that's good witches. No, there's no good witches. Come on. But that's black magic again. What? No. It's all anti God. And how many of us used to watch that, that uh, television program years ago? Bewitched. Tick a dick a dick. You know. Oh. And it was just. See, it, it makes you, it just makes you open for, every, for anything. You know what I mean? It makes you open for anything. It's acceptable. No, 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 no. So he said, all, uh, the, all of this is demonic. All of this is ungodly. All of these are things that, that are abominations to God. That means disgusting and hateful to God. So he's, uh, the, he says, uh, that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with what? Familiar spirits, seances. Ain't Jane came to see me last night. Ain't Jane been dead 45 years. That's a demon. If you saw your Aunt Jane, you saw a demon. Now, I'm going to have to show you, not today, won't be today, in the word of God, why are these people so dangerous? They're dangerous. There, and everybody knows the story of Saul, how, how he, he sought out a woman that had a familiar spirit because yes, God had rejected him. Yes, King of Israel, anointed by God. Yes, but all of these are abominations to God. Yes, Every last one of them. Yes, familiar spirits, necromancers, fortune tellers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it says, all, he said in 12th verse, for all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord and because of the, these abominations, the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee. He said that. See, for, for the nations which thou shalt possess hearken unto observers of times, uh, unto diviners, but as for thee, the Lord thy God has not suffered thee to do so. You are sanctified. You're set apart. You're going to be holding to the Lord. You're going to be different. Yes, sir. Amen. And that's why it's so important for the, the saints of God to not be conformed, as the Bible says, to this world. You want to be like everybody else. Yes. You don't want to be accepting of every. All you're doing is opening your heart and your mind up for stuff that you really don't want, stuff you cannot handle. As a human, saved, but still stuff you cannot handle spiritually. Amen. And some of these people deal in what they call the occult. Occultism is a dangerous thing. They are dealing flat out with demonic entities, yes, demonic spirits. Yes, they deal with some, some people. They even try to, to disturb the dead. Come on now. Yes, or they deal with a spirit that is well acquainted with you and that individual. A familiar spirit. You know what? Whatever you do, stay away from witchcraft. Yes, sir. Whatever, of any sort. If you have been involved, talking about it, somebody was talking another week about how the ancestors are going to come and, and take them over to, to, to their eternity. No, they're not. I know. Well, I'm going to get off. That. I'm going to let that alone. That's Deuteronomy. I mean, this is, that, that was uh, Deuteronomy, what, the 18th? We're going to read Leviticus, and we're going to close out. I'm going to read Leviticus, and then I'm going to read one more as we close out, to close us out. The book of Leviticus about, let's see, let's go with about the 19th chapter. But anything that has once been an abomination still is. Just keep that in mind. Leviticus 19 and... And so 12th, 13th, and 14th. Go ahead. And ye shall not swear by my name falsely. Listen, go ahead. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. Amen. I am the Lord. Yes, he is. Amen. 
Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor. Amen. Neither rob him. Praise God. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night Come on. until the morning. How many, how many of y'all remember growing up? Somebody would knock on the door and your mom and dad would say, go tell them I'm not home. <laughs> yes, sir. You go say, well, daddy said he's not home right now. <laughs> so how many? <laughs> because they owed him. You don't hide from people you owe. Amen. You have somebody do something for you, some work for you, something like that. Make sure you take care of that. Yes, Whatever you do. Don't, don't uh, you contract with somebody to do something, you agree or whatever, and, and they perform the service, pay for it. Yes. Pay for it. You, you would want to be treated the same. Yes, sir. Amen. Read, brother. Thou shalt not curse the deaf nor put a stumbling block Amen. before the blind. Amen. Praise God. But shall fear thy that's God. That's right. Amen. That, 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 that's good. That, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Hallelujah. And that, that, that's good that that was there, thank God. And, but he says here in the 26th verse, Ye shall not eat anything with the blood. Uh-oh. Oh, come on. Read. Neither shall ye use Enchantment. There it is again. No you don't observe. use spells yes, or enchantments or use astrology yes, or be of an observer of times. Yes, sir. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, mm -hmm. neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. Mm -hmm. Read it. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh Come on. for the dead. Come on, read it. Nor print any marks upon you. Listen, you don't do that. Like tattooing and all this. I know the word, it's, 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 everything's it's gone crazy. Everybody wants to get their ink. Yes, sir. If, you, if you, are, you come in like that, okay, that's where you are. It's, it's, it's on there. But don't fill your body up with that kind of stuff. Don't worry, don't worry, don't do it. Go ahead, read, brother. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Keep reading. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Now, who would do such a thing? You would be surprised. Go ahead. To cause her to be a whore. Uh-huh. Lest the land fall into horror, Amen. and the land become full of wickedness. Amen. Read it. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths. Yes, read. And reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Read. Reg regard not them that have familiar spirits. Don't deal with them. Don't give them respect or anything. Go ahead. Neither seek after wizards. To be defiled by them. So you can, how? How can you be defiled by a wizard? If he is the person who's in sin, if it's a witch, she's in sin, you will never consult with the occult, even if you try to do something uh, concerning somebody else. Don't even I won't even read a book concerning that, that kind of thing. Or it's got something in it about, uh, no, no, no. If you, when you do that, you're going to be touched by that spirit. Yes, sir. You're going to be marked by that spirit. Not only did you touch them, the person, or you commune with them, you're going to be left with something. That's what happens to a lot of people. Yes, sir. And that's why you, you ask people sometimes, have you had any involvement with the occult? And if you have, renounce it, denounce it in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. And declare Jesus Christ as your Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But denounce that. Because he, he, he said in another place, thou shalt not. So I'm going to get that and just read that one scripture. We'll, we'll close this out with that. But it says in the 27th verse of the 20th chapter. Yes, sir. Y'all read this whole chapter, the 20th chapter. Read, read all of it. But read the 27th verse, brother. A man also or a woman that hath a familiar spirit. Listen. Or that is a wizard. Mm-hmm shall surely be put to death. So God is sending us out to kill people? No. No, sir. You will go to jail for murder. In fact, grandmother, you say you're going to get the electric chair. <laughs> <laughs> Scare me to death. You're going to the electric chair. What? Okay. <laughs> oh, man. No, no. But God hates it. Yes, sir. He hates the occult. All that stuff, that information, the spell, all that mess, the signs of the times and all this, all that stuff. They shall stone them with stones. Mm -hmm. Their blood shall be upon them. That's good. Yes, 
this. That's good. Get that last scripture for me, and I got one more, and I'm going to close out. Thou should not suffer a witch to live. Exodus, the book of Exodus, 22nd chapter, the 18th verse. Just for clarification, just to show you what God says and the way he thinks what God really feels about ungodliness. Thou shall not suffer a witch to live. So God is okay with witchcraft, white, magic, black? Not at all. God wants his people totally turned away. And a lot of the stuff you find has infiltrated the church. And that's why Paul, he, he wasn't uh, talking about anything other than people dealing with the occult when he, he, he knew that in the name of religion and some people profaning the name of God, using the name of the Lord Jesus Christ had charmed and bewitched some other people. He said, who's, who's cast this spell on you that you should turn? From that witchcraft is a dangerous thing, and it all has to do with the occult, all of it. So that, that's it. I'm going to read this one scripture, and it, it tells the church in the 24th verse of Jude. It gives a, a blessing to the church, and I pray this for you in Jesus' name. It's very simple, but it praises God. It says, now unto him, unto God, unto the Lord Jesus Christ that is able to keep you from falling. He can, he can, and he will. He can keep you from being overcome by these things because great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And dear Lord God, we trust in that and we live and lean, live in that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's the message for, for the day. Let's give the Lord Jesus a big hand and we're going to close out and go home. Praise God for his goodness. Praise God for his goodness. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Still a, it's, it's so much, to, but you can't cover everything in one day. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.